Hello YouTubers, this is RustyTube with a tutorial on how to make a simple rotating logo just like the one you can see in the lower right corner of this video. We won't be using any complicated or expensive software. In fact, all we will use is Pavre. Pavre is a ray tracing software, a renderer, which is completely free can be downloaded for free from pavre.org and it works on Windows, Macintosh, Unix, Linux, or just about anything you can imagine. It doesn't have a complicated user interface. In fact, it is a command line program, although I'm showing you a Windows version which comes with its own editor, just like a typical Windows program. First of all, we will produce this as a 640 by 480 image, which we have chosen in this little window what kind of what size of image we want to create. Then we have to describe everything that is in the scene. We start by describing the camera, its location, now the numbers that we are using are all relative numbers in Pavre. You can think of them as meters or feet or anything you want. It doesn't matter. It is all relative. And it works with the coordinate systems with x, y, and z coordinates. The center of the system, of course, is at 0, 0, 0. So we're going to place our camera at minus 0 0.5, minus 0 0.5, minus 6. But we'll make sure that it looks at zero, which is a shortcut for saying zero, zero, zero. And we tell it that we want the camera to look at the 50 degree angle. We also define a little simple light source in white color. And we place it at 1.5 minus 1.5 minus 10, which is just about in front of where we want the image itself to be, the, the logo that is. Then we declare simple text. We have to use true type fonts. That's the only fonts that Pavre understands. I wish it understood PostScript fonts, but it doesn't understand. So we type text, TTF, then we give the name of the font, and it's not the name that you would use in typography, but actually the file name of the font. So I just renamed in my font.ttf. Then we say what text we want it to show. And in this case, it's the letters R and P. RP for red prints, which is what I am known in the internet and in the video world. Then we put two numeric values after that. One is 0 0.1, which tells it that the thickness of the letter should be about one-tenth of, of the, the size of the, of the font. And 0 means no extra additional spacing between the letters. We need to give it some kind of a texture. This is all explained, by the way, in, in the manual that comes free with Pavre, so I'm not going into any details. We just give it a color that is sort of a golden color and give it a reflective finish and make sure that it looks metallic, like gold, in my case, because red prints, it's the color of the crown that you could see at the start of this video. Now, this places the text at zero, 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 which is right in the middle of the screen in the uh, upper right qu qu quarter of the screen. And now I scale it by 0 0.5. That means I make it one half smaller in all three dimensions, x, y, and z. Now, because I want to rotate it, and all rotation happens around an axis, I'll be rotating it around the y-axis. I have to move it a little bit to the left so that the center of the text 
is at the y-axis, 0. So I'm moving it using the translate minus 0 0.25 times x. It moves it a quarter unit to the left. Then I tell it to rotate it by minus clock times 360 times y. Now, by default, clock equals 0. So uh, originally, <coughs> we're not rotating it. We're just showing the text. And finally, I'm telling it to move the result to the lower right corner of the image. Now, we want to render it. We need to tell it how to render it. And there's a little window here, which is additional command line parameters. The plus FN tells it to create the image as a PNG file rather than Windows bitmap, which it does by default under Windows. The plus UA tells it to preserve the alpha channel. That means that the background will be totally invisible. Now, all we have to do is click Run, and it will create the image. As you can see, there is an invisible background, and it just shows us the little RP. Now, that just created a file. What kind of file? Well, the name of this file is rps.pov, so it created a file called rps.png. But we want to make it an animation, so we have to add some additional information on the command line to make sure that it prints uh, several, several uh, frames. And we have to tell it the number of frames. And that gives us the command plus KFF. That's for final frame. And I'm doing this at 30 frames a second. I want to do it for, for let's say, 4 seconds. So that's 120. And I need to give it an additional value because it's a rotating logo. It's a cyclical logo, which is a plus KC. This makes the, the resulting images cyclical. That means that it will actually create images 1 through 120 from 121. If we didn't do that, then the 120th would be the same as the first. And every time it comes to, to that place, uh, to the final uh, frame, the next frame would be the f same as the first frame. So what happens now? Now the value of clock is changing depending on the frame that it is creating. So it's 0 for the first frame and 1 for the last frame, which would be 121, which it doesn't create. It only creates 120 of them. And all now we have to do is click Run. And I'm not going to show it to you because that, would, that takes a while. But all it does is simply create uh, the 120 images, which we can then import into any video editing program, and we can uh, make them, import them as frames, not, not as individual images, and then we can run them as much as we want, just as we have been running them, as you have been seeing them, in the lower right corner of this video. And that's all there is to this. It is that simple.